angels, it's Haley Reese, and you guys are definitely just about as shocked as me that I am filming yet another, third time's the charm I guess, of my Dear David videos. My last Dear David video was actually titled, Dear David is fake, question mark, exclamation point, let's talk theories. And I basically explored the concept of why Dear David might be a made up story, why it could be a hoax, and how small the probability is of Adam Ellis continuing to capture these blood-curdling, hair-standing-up, creepy-as-ever, clear-as-day photos of David. But yet again, he has captured more. And these ones are just absolutely jaw-dropping. I am so skeptical of this situation, not because I think this is a fake story, not because I'm accusing Adam Ellis of being a liar, not because I don't love Dear David, because I do, I love every bit of this story, but because how on earth can Adam Ellis capture this many photos of David and such creepy photos of David and so consistent and Every time it portrays the same type of thing, I just find it so unbelievable and I think that's what makes this story so interesting. I do not know what to make of Dear David. I do not know what to think of these photos. My mind is in a million different places and I'm going to be honest with you guys. I originally saw the photo because you guys tagged me in it. I thought, this is insane and I wasn't even going to read the thread. <laughs> because it freaks me out and if these are real photos my goodness I need an Adam Ellis in my life in my house to capture the things that I try to capture on camera like that but I just don't always have the most luck but you guys kept asking me to please read the thread update you guys on what has just taken place and decode it with you and see what we all think so that is what we are going to do today we're gonna to read the latest Dear David update we're going to look at the images, we're going to talk about some of the theories we discussed before, and we're going to examine what is Dear David and how has it become so evident that Adam is seeing something. Alrighty, let's find the beginning. This is a long thread. I'm interested to see what exactly he talks about. Sorry for the long break. I haven't been feeling great the past couple of weeks and haven't had time to update. Thread. There also wasn't much to say for the most part. I wasn't sleeping well. Me too, Adam. Me too. And I was having weird dreams, but they were vague and hard to describe. Again, me too. <laughs> I'm sleepy all day long and I've been getting sudden bouts of dizziness. I chalked it up to always having earbuds crammed in and made a mental note to get my ears checked. Other than that, things were pretty quiet. I sort of fooled myself into thinking that finding those items in the attic somehow ended all this. Not that that would make much sense. Actually, sometimes spirits become attached to places because there are some sort of remains of theirs there. Be it in some horrifying, creepy circumstances, a body, be it a personal item or the fact that they, you know, have something, some sort of connection, physical connection to the space. So if you were to remove that one thing that could be tying them there, that they could have formed an attachment to, it could end things or it could make them worse. You just never really know. The spirit world is hard to understand. <laughs> but last week, something started to happen. Late on Wednesday, I woke up with a start and felt something strange, like something had just been watching me. I turned on the light, but I was alone. Still, there was this tangible feeling of badness. Everything felt wrong. Sort of like when you have the flu and you wake up at night and you can't tell where you are for a minute. It was a feeling I'm used to. It always accompanies David. People tweet at me a lot saying he might just need help, but I'm certain that's not the case. Every time he shows up, I feel a palpable sense of malice. There's what I felt that night. Malice. Dread. But still, I was alone and I was so tired. I wound up just going back to sleep. I've been so exhausted recently, I can barely function. The next night, the same thing happened. I woke up suddenly, feeling like I'd missed seeing something, like a candle had just gone out and I could still smell it. I thought about using the pet cam in the living room to monitor my bedroom while I slept, but the cord was too short to get the camera high enough to see the entire room, so I improvised. 
I downloaded an app that takes a photo every 60 seconds and set my phone on top of a bookcase. It's almost 7 feet tall, so it had a pretty good view of my bed in the surrounding room. Then I went to sleep. Just like before, I jolted awake hours later feeling the same unease. I turned on the light and hurried out of bed to get my phone from the bookcase. There were probably 350 photos to scroll through. The vast majority of them were me sleeping in an empty room. It's sort of dark, but you can see me sleeping. I'd left a couple lights on just in case anything showed up, but for the first hundred or so, it was just me in an empty room. Then he inserts this image here of the empty room. Then suddenly, he was there, standing on the chair at the foot of the bed, staring at me. In the next photo, from a minute later, he seems to be staring straight up at the ceiling, just staring. Ugh, guys, this picture's so creepy and, like, so unbelievable. Like, if this is real, he has to be one of the most successful people in capturing this creepy little ghost. Like, I don't get it, but wow, like, what? Then he appears to collapse on the chair. The next dozen photos are all the same. He's completely lifeless. At first, I thought he was dead which obviously doesn't make any sense. I looked over the chair half expecting him to still be there, but it was empty. But then, in the next photo, he's gone. The room totally empty again. It's gone in several photos too. Or he's gone in several photos too. I figured maybe that was it, but I kept swiping through the photos. About 15 photos later, he was back standing next to the bed. It was just like the last time I saw him. That's when my heart started to race. I didn't want to look at the rest of the photos, but I knew I had to. I swiped to the next photo and my heart sank into my stomach. He was standing on my bed, inches away from me, staring down at me. Again, these photos are so okay. What I mean by this is anytime you really see like a photo of someone capturing a ghost, most typically they're very like translucent like, shadow like, figure like, once in a while, you'll see a, like a photo caught of a ghost where they look like they're in the photo. David is so solid looking, like he looks like he is physically in that room. There is nothing ghost-like about him other than the fact that no human looks like this. The next one was worse. In the next photo, he's staring right at the camera. So creepy. So creepy. After that, there's seemingly nothing. He disappears again and the rest of this girl is me alone in my room again. That is until the last photo. Here's the final photo on the scroll. I don't like this one one bit. This looks very human-like to me. This is like so creepy. Like regardless of if it's real or not, it's flipping creepy that picture. Like, ah, it's so creepy. And then he says, I'm at a loss for words. That malformed ear, that stringy hair, I don't even know what to think. I looked all over my room but couldn't find anything and honestly, I've been so exhausted, I didn't know how to process it. Then he says, even now, all I want to do is sleep. So that is the end of the Dear David update thread. A lot just went on in that. Take a moment, process it. At this point, leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys think. I'm about to get into my theories and... Okay, here we go. <laughs> so something that I note that's interesting in these photos is that the figure actually casts a shadow. Now, typically when a spirit is in our realm, they're coming into a different realm than their own, into a different dimension. See, what I mean by this is they're basically within two dimensions at once. Think of Stranger Things. Think of the fact that when they're traveling in the upside down, there's still like signs of them in this current dimension. A spirit is often between the, the veil of both dimensions. So most typically they appear as like an apparition or a shadow or, you know, a figure. But I did find it a little bit strange and interesting that David casts a shadow as if he's actually physically there, if that makes any sense. Another very creepy inconsistency in the photos that just weirds me out is in the photos where David is standing on the bed and on the chair at the end of the bed and all of that, he doesn't actually appear to have hair on his head. He kind of looks bald to me. It looks like more smoothed out. Then in that final photo, he suddenly has stringy hair and like a weird ear and it's just all the more human-like. I don't know. These photos are just really hard to 
pinpoint. And I am completely on the fence, but regardless of it all, one thing I do have to say is if this is a made up story, it's wonderfully crafted, it's beautifully written, I mean beautifully, not beautifully in the sense, oh that's a beautiful poetic story, but in the sense that it's really well written, it's captivating, it's engaging, it really makes you want to know what happens next and where this story ends. So whether or not it's a real experience or it's a made up story, I have to give props to Adam Ellis for that, for keeping the viewers engaged and keeping people wanting to know what happens more. I think at this point, there's a lot of people who really couldn't care less if it's real. They're just engaged in the story and that's completely okay. I don't know, you guys wanted to hear my reaction on this. I contemplated whether I should do it after in my last video, I was like trying to debunk Dear David. But I mean, it's a creepy update, it's strange, those pictures are terrifying, even if they are fake. Like, nobody wants to picture something like that standing looking down at them while they're sleeping. Like, I definitely do not want to picture that. But nonetheless, that's basically my thoughts on it. Is it a doll? Is it great Photoshop? Is it a real ghost? I really don't know. So once again, I always do this. But I'm going to encourage you guys to let me know what you thought of this latest update of Dear David, what you think of the photos, what you think of the shadow they cast, what you think of the fact that he doesn't appear to have hair in any of them, but that final one, there's stringy, creepy hair. I never even knew hair could be creepy like that, but it is. And we'll talk it out amongst each other because that's what we do on this channel and we do believe in the unbelievable, so I mean... On that note, that is it for today's video. I want to quickly let you guys know that my Santa Baby cover is officially on Spotify, so you can stream it and listen to it on there. And I can't wait to see you guys in tomorrow's video. If you're new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed though, I would really love it if you would click that subscribe button. And if you did enjoy today's video, it would really make my heart happy if you gave it a thumbs up. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, I love you.